little explainer on how to use Qualtrics and how to complete the second part of the survey construction assignment, which is the survey paper, right? Okay, so first, what is Qualtrics? Well, it's a free software that you can use as a student to create surveys, right? So how do you find it? Well, you go to the portal, right? You log into the portal and then you click on where it says more apps. You'll see, scroll down, you'll see Qualtrics, right? Click on this bad boy, leads you to here. You have to log in with your credentials like you would to the portal itself. Then it's going to take you to your projects. If you haven't done anything yet, there's nothing gonna be here, right? So you just click on create new project to input your survey. Okay, you'll see it's a survey right here. Just click on this bad boy. And then you wanna title it, right? So let's say research methods course survey, right? And then you go to get started. My computer's lagging a bit, but I promise it's not usually this long. Okay, now you're in here. So how do you actually enter in your questions? Well, you literally just click into this box, right? The question boxes, and you can type in whatever question you're looking for. So such as, what is your age, right? And then here you would put in your kind of rank choices for age, maybe like 18 to 25, right? Or something like that. And then if there's not enough choices here, if three isn't enough, you can add more choices right here, right? So maybe you want five choices, or if you only want two choices, you can delete them here, right? So this kind of helps you with each one. If you have a different question type you're looking for, like, something where someone just puts in information into a box versus most of the time we're going to be using multiple choice but again you could have text entry if you would like to um so yeah you just basically click on these ones um put in your you know answers and again the answer choices they just you want them to be as mutually exclusive as possible also there's sometimes automatic choices that you could use like let's say you're using a likert scale right strongly agree through strongly disagree you could use that as automatic choices also sometimes there's predictive answer choices right so if i was to put something like yes then you see that maybe and no pop in as other options which you can then delete if you don't want those particular automatic choices but that does often help you fill in your survey quicker so let's say you have your answer choices, you want to create a new question, you can click right here or just click this little plus button, right? Let's say you want to move them around a little, you can change the order of the questions. Click right here, change the name of the question. So you can see it's pretty user friendly design, right? How to change the order, the name, all that kind of fun stuff. So it is pretty user friendly, right? So once you're done with inputting all the questions you've already checked with me, right you're going to go back to your projects or publish right publish it's going to give you this automatic anonymous link that you're going to copy and then paste into the forum on canvas right or another way to do this let's say you go back to projects and you're in this screen right you would go here the little dot 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 go to distribute and then when you see um the options here on the left hand side click on anonymous link and same deal you're going to get this link that you would cut and paste to put on that forum on canvas so that other students can take your survey right so let's try what that looks like go over to canvas once you go to the Canvas page for our class, go to Modules, go down to Week 10, and you'll see the form for surveys, right? You click on this, then you just basically go to Reply like you would for any other, and you're going to just basically cut and paste your link, your anonymous link, into here. Then you're going to want to write about a sentence describing your survey, right? So this survey is about student support for a female 
presidential candidate. Right? Something like that. And then you just post reply, bada boom, bada bing. And you're going to then take some time to take the surveys of your classmates, right? So it's pretty straightforward that way of how you do this part of it, right? It just then, um, that's pretty much all you need to do for this part of the assignment is to put this on here, you'll get some results, and then you'll start working on the next part of the paper, right? Which is when you actually kind of analyze your results, right? So let's say this is already posted on there, everything's good to go, right? Let's go back to the assignment sheet. So for the survey paper, basically you're going to, you already did the questions, right? You created the questions. You just put them into the survey as you've already done on Qualtrics, right? Then you're going to answer these questions once you have some results, right? So you're going to um, answer how many respondents completed your survey. And this is very straightforward, right? Oh, I had 12 people. That's, that's a good answer. Did you have any difficulty using Qualtrics or did any classmates report not receiving access to your survey, right? If this is yes, just briefly describe any of the issues that you faced. Um, if no, then say no, I didn't face any issues, right? Um, when you were taking your classmates surveys, did you have difficulty answering any of the questions? For example, did any question not make sense or were the questions poorly worded. Hopefully not, because you've gone through the question submission assignment, but you know, sometimes things still slip through. Um, looking at the results, did you notice any responses that did not make sense in relationship to the question? Did you receive any unanticipated results? Right, so basically you're just gonna go through and answer all of these in a week or so once you have some results, right? Because this will be due at the end of week 11, so you'll have all of week 10 and all of week 11 to get some responses before you have to submit the actual paper, right? And the paper itself is super straightforward. You basically just answer these questions, you add a cross tab and your survey question. So let's say you submitted your survey questions and I said, great job, and that's, you didn't have to revise anything. You're gonna attach those same questions to the end of your survey paper. Now, if you submitted questions and needed revisions, same deal, you're going to attach your questions to the end of the paper, right? You can just cut and paste them in after you have your answers to the survey questions, or to the survey paper questions, right? The data results and reflection limitation questions. Then the cross tab, right? Again, cross tabs aren't as scary as they might sound. So to do this, I'm gonna have to show you one that I've already have some results for, which, um, you know, not the one I just created <laughs> just a second ago. But anyway, let me show you really quick. So going back to Qualtrics, going to projects, right, you're going to see all your projects that you have there, which will probably just be this one. So let's say I click on here and I want to make a cross tab that shows a relationship between some of the variables in the survey, right? So for something like that, I'm going to go to data analysis. Then you click on cross tabs. Okay, so this is just telling you kind of what's going on. It's like they basically constantly update Qualtrics, um, which is good, but also means I have to constantly update this video. But anyway, so <laughs> just skip this stuff right now. Or, hey, if you really want a, a better understanding, feel free to take a tour, right? Um, so for right now, let's say by default, it's put two questions together here. So you can drag whatever question you want to these boxes to see what cross tabulation results, right? So um, basically you can see all the different variables I have here and all the different questions, right? And then um, you're just going to, like I said, you're just gonna compare two different ones. So right here, automatically generated is actually a pretty interesting cross tab, right? So question eight, would you vote for female president or female candidate for president if she was nominated by your political party? you see that by age, there's a little bit of a difference here, right? You had two respondents, 18 to 25, said uh, all of them said yes. You had a little bit of variance within the three 25 to 35. You see a maybe response at 36 to 45, and then a no once you get 
to 45 to 55. But interestingly, one yes in the 65 plus. So really, uh, of course, there's not enough responses here. It's not like I have 100 respondents and I can give you some real deep statistical analyses here. This is really just to kind of give you an idea of different patterns that may emerge through the survey process. Remember, this paper isn't supposed to be a cumbersome, scary thing. It's really just to make you go through the mechanisms of the process so that you have a better understanding of how survey construction and analysis works from the inside and the outside of it, right? You're going to take the surveys and you're going to make the surveys. So it gives you a good idea of the process, which makes you a better consumer of data, right? Even if you're like, no, I never want to do research methods again. It's not going to be my passion. That's fine. At least you'll be more understanding of the kind of surveys you come in contact with, right? So anyway, actually, I think this is a pretty good cross tab, the one by default. But again, you could change it to what's your level of education, right? And see how that relates to support, right? So you can change it out however you like. I kind of liked this one, so I'm just going to go back to that one. Anywho, so then when you're ready to export your cross tab, you go to export. Now you just want this one current cross tab with all steps. So this is going to give you all the information about this particular cross tab. You do not want this one. This one gives you an automatically generated thing of every potential cross tab, meaning comparing each question to each other, um, which is way more than you need for this paper. What I suggest is since um, you only have a few questions, I'd say play around with it a little bit before you export just to see, you know, what kind of relationship there is to these kind of things. So for example, is there a gender difference in support for a female presidential candidate, right? You can look at these totals and get an idea. And of course, this is going to tell you how many people actually took it um, to get an idea of support. So you see that there's a little bit of a split, split support among men. There's unanimous support among women and unanimous support among the non-binary for supporting a female president, right? So again, that it doesn't mean that you can necessarily analyze these things in full depth at this point, the idea is just to look for any sort of relationship between your demographic variables and some of your other variables, right? So again, I like this one, so I'm going with this one. Okay, so export, like I said before, you do current cross tab with all stubs, allow. So this is what you end up with, right? Once you download that cross tab, and you're going to add this to the end of your paper, right? If you're using a Word doc or PDF, usually you can just kind of, you know, copy and paste this bad boy into there. If you prefer not to, you can upload this as a separate file, either, again, a doc, a PDF, or Excel form. You can upload this file in addition to the survey paper, right? But it's pretty easy often just to kind of copy and paste it and then just literally put it in after the answers to your survey questions, right? Same thing with your list of questions for your survey. You're just going to get your copy of those, cut and paste those into the end of your paper. So there is a sample paper on Canvas. So let me go through that really quick too. So if you look at the survey construction assignment information, You'll see the survey paper sample is there, as well as the survey construction assignment sheet. So I also want to point out that with a sample, it doesn't mean it's perfect. It just is an example of a previous student's work to give you an idea of what to do for the paper, right? So here you first have the data results, reflection, and limitation questions that are spelled out and answered, right? Um, and then you see the questions themselves that are just cut and paste into this document. Easy peasy. But this gives me an opportunity to see how you use your answer choices. Also to see if you did apply the edits that I asked for or if you didn't have edits. Either way, I still want to see it. Um, and then you just add your cross tab, right? Um, this student added more than one cross tab. Like I said before, totally not necessary. Feel free to just do one cross tab like the one I showed you. Um, but again, this particular student was trying to look at the relationships between these particular variables, right? So you got that there. She has a couple of them in here and that's it, right? That's all you need for the paper. So it's actually pretty straightforward, right? The whole idea of this paper is not to be cumbersome or difficult. It's really just to give you the basic mechanisms of how this works, right? 
The paper shouldn't really be that hefty. It's just going through those basic steps, right? It should be pretty quick to do. So like I said, if you have questions, feel free to hit me up on Canvas inbox or come to my office hours, email me, right? I don't want you to be stressed. This whole thing is just the, uh, learning the mechanisms, right? Going through the process is what I'm looking for. No need for the research to contextualize it or any of that kind of fun stuff. But again, if you have questions, let me know because I want to make this as clear as possible so that there's not any confusion.